Hello, my name is Ryan Snod. It rhymes with odd, if you guys were curious. Um, and thank you for watching the little video I put together. Hopefully you guys liked it. Um, basically, I, I graduated here about a year and a half ago or so. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really, I'm really honored to be up here. I know the, the groups that decided who was going to speak today were looking for successful alumni. So um, I was like, wow, you want me to come speak? OK. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm really appreciative to be up here and to share my experience with you guys through Simpson and kind of share where I'm at now in my life today. Um, internships really kind of helped me through my process through here, here at college, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, it really showed me what I wanted out of a job and what I really didn't want from a job, um, which all the interns that I helped interview with this video can attest to that. A lot of them had negative experiences that steered them certain ways, which were great. Uh, they're all great in their own way. So. Um, we're going to get into that now. But basically, with my story, um, when I was a freshman here, I, I landed here and came from a really tough spot in my life personally. Just to be brief, uh, my parents had gotten divorced when I was a senior in high school, and it was a tough time for me. And I got here, and I was like, you know what? I, I really want to make something of myself. And I was all by myself, and I, was, I paid for my college completely by myself, um, which was trying at times as well. Uh, but I really, I, I really thought, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to go work for this huge company and make all this money and do something great with my life, which is kind of funny because it's like the furthest thing from what I do now. Um, and I really learned through that process that um, internships were the angle for me uh, personally to, to differentiate myself. I started talking to successful alumni and other people, and they, you know, if they were recent grads, they said, yeah, the in internships really changed my experience. So. I really doubled down on that, and freshman year, I put on my fancy suit. Not this one. It was really baggy and stupid looking. <laughs> As I waltzed into a career fair, I was 19, kicked the door and said, give me a job, right? I think it was in this room, actually. And uh, I remember distinctly going up to a company, which I won't name, and uh, they, were, they were like, oh, hi. And I was super excited. I'm like, oh, I'm Ryan Snod. And like, how do you say that? Like, it rhymes with odd, you know? And uh, they were like, oh, well, when do you graduate? I was like, I th like four years, I think. I'm like, how old are you? I'm like 19. I'm like, we don't want you here. You don't you know you have to have experience to get experience with an internship, which was news to me. So uh, I went home and just that that picture up there. I don't know why I put that in there. I actually broke my roommate's TV, Kresge, with the the bunks. I don't know if you guys lived in there, but it's really tight, and I hit my head because I'm tall. So anyway, I also thought necklaces were cool. There was, it was a weird time. So, um, so after I unsuccessfully um, did not get an internship as a freshman, which, to be honest, I didn't deserve one. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I went home, and my mom got me a job, thankfully, at a meat plant working third shift, which I don't know if you guys have worked third shift, but third shift is terrible, and working in a meat plant is right up there. So uh, it was the best job that I ever had because I never wanted to do it again. Um, I will share one brief story. It was 10 a.m. to 8 a.m. was my shift. It was 4 a.m. in the morning. I was falling asleep in my machine, and some guy comes in frantically. He's like, Ryan. I'm like, yes. He's like, there's an explosion in the chili room. And I was like, oh, no. Long story short, I found myself in muck boots, a smock, and a shovel, knee-deep in chili, and I stopped, and I said, I never want to do this ever again. <laughs> so I came, home, I came here that fall, bound and determined, come hell or high water, I am not working at that meat plant again. So I was bound and determined to get an internship, and it really put a fire underneath me. So I came, came back, was staying in Buxton. I was so happy, I even liked the view from those little tiny uh, <laughs> bedrooms at Buxton. So uh, I don't know how many of you guys lived in Buxton. If, I don't know how long it's bang up, but it's a tight quarters in there uh, for sure. So I returned. I was on a mission. I said, you know what? I'm getting an internship. So uh, through that sophomore year, I really I connected with Bobby and Lori and some of these other folks in, in career development to just try and get something. So uh, lo, lo and behold, I landed an internship in sales and marketing. And um, I was basically, I mean, it was, looking back, it was a really great experience. Um, I, If you're in in Menards, that was my main store, Best Buy or Costco, and what was it, 2015, and you saw that dude on the right, you were getting sold DirecTV. So uh, 
I'm sorry if I was pitching you because I, I got told no about 400 times a day, um, which that was the, hu- the big lesson from this. So long story short, I, I started that internship. I got promoted from intern to account manager in two and a half weeks <laughs> and started, started training and developing people twice my age at 20 years old, which sounds awesome, but it's really hard when you're trying to train someone to be a salesman when they're like, can you even drink yet? <laughs> um, so that was trying in its, own, in its own right. But So that's what I was doing all that summer. It was a great experience. I got to travel all over the place, really kind of make my own luck happen there. Um, but this, the big lesson that I learned from this role as my first internship was to just take rejection and be completely okay with failure. I think so many people in college just expect to just go through college and get a you know 4.0 and get the amazing job and before graduation and life's not like that all the time. So that was a really big reminder for me that failure is okay and just to accept it completely. So after that year, junior year went by super fast. Like I don't even remember junior year. It just went whiz by and then I was in an internship interview with 10 companies going into the end of junior year and I was like, this is awesome. But none of them gave me an offer. So I was like, okay. So I was planning to study abroad experience in Europe, which Ashley's gonna talk in a second. She was there, which is really cool. She's up there on the right. Um, also those telephone booths don't work, just a heads up. If you're ever in London, those don't work. I thought they did. But I was, I was uh, 10 days before the trip, I had two internship experiences that were going to um, basically decide where I went. I, I left the country not knowing what I was doing for the summer. And I told you guys about the meat plant. I'm not going back to that meat plant. So I was really fingers crossed hoping. And I had it between two different roles. And I still remember vividly getting that email at 4 a.m. in the morning uh, in Amsterdam in the hostel that I got offered both jobs. And I went outside because there was like 10 people in this hostel like crawling over people. I go out in the hallway, I'm like, whoa, yeah, you know, fist bumping. I'm pretty sure Bobby's ears are probably still ringing for me calling or telling her I got the job. So um, that, then there was a big choice for me. I had to decide, do I want to do a nonprofit or do I want to go work for a company that was actually going to be working on the Michelin Tire account for an ad agency, which in hindsight, I pretty much work for an ad agency now. So I probably should have taken the other one. But I took the nonprofit based on the connections. So I, 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 I don't know how, but I had enough maturity to say, um, I'm going to take the nonprofit because I'm going to connect with community leaders. So I'm going to connect with other business leaders in the community. And I, I really think that those connections will get me where I want to go in life. And lo and behold, the last month of my internship, somebody I worked with at the Greater Des Moines Partnership connected me with somebody that got me where I'm at now. So I, I really think connections are huge. Clout, obviously, we all want to be gorillas in life, right? And bang our chest and stuff. But um, really being intentional with connections, I think, was a huge differentiator for me. So that was a big part of my experience. So I, I took the internship with the partnership, uh, working for the Greater Des Moines Leadership Institute. And there's me by a weird water thing in the Marriott. I don't know why that picture's up there. Um, but it was, it was a great experience, like I said. And I learned, again, like we said, that things that you don't like about your job can actually pay off for you. So I learned that nonprofit work was not for me, personally. Um, that I wanted to work in more of an ad agency environment and a creative environment. And during this time, I also started my own freelance videography business, which I still do today. So um, I was also asking, I was like, can I make videos? And like, we just need you to like blog. I'm like, ugh, I just want to make videos. So that kind of helped me a little bit as well. So going into today, uh, I basically work, I work for a creative uh, studio in Urbandale. We're essentially an ad agency. We have about 20 employees and I get to do what I love every day, which is video marketing. So. Um, The really cool thing about my role in the company that I work for now, I've been there for almost two years since I graduated, and um, I basically went into the interview and I asked them, what what do you guys need? And they gave me a laundry list of stuff that we need, and I said, oh, I can do like half of that. Like, you're hired, cool. Um, They didn't tell me in my internships that it was going to take six interviews, two lunches, and two months. So I was like unemployed for two months, and I don't know if you guys have experienced that, but it's like... I can only live on my savings forever, and then the loans hit. So um, anyway, it was a really great experience getting to that point, and I think internships really geared me up for those interviews and those types of things. Um, and then also just having the hindsight to ask, like, what, what does your company need? What do you need? And, and solving those problems for people. So, And then I also run my own uh, freelance business as well, where I shoot freelance videos and do some fun stuff like the video you just saw. Um, and then... I also provide resources and online courses for uh, other videographers like myself that are trying to get explosive growth in their businesses because I have 
kind of an interesting story with that, which I haven't even talked about, which I won't talk about tonight. But I help other videographers do what I've done faster, quicker, more efficiently. So that's what I do today. I, I'm really, like I said, very humbled to be considered a successful alumni. Um, I, I work probably 14 hours a day, but I don't really think it's work. Uh, my fiance can probably tell you differently, but I'm like trapped in my office when I come home, just like clicking away. So um, making videos is awesome and it's what I love to do and it's what I'll continue to do. So my, my big three that I wanted to mention today before I sign off here, the three things that I learned from all this experience, number one was to over deliver. Um, sadly enough, expectations for college students, people's aren't very high. Uh, like professors just, just come to class, you know, like just, just show up, try, you know, that type of thing. So if you over deliver in every aspect of your life, it, it comes back to you in, in a big way. So if you're, if everyone's doing bare minimum and you go above and beyond, people will take notice of that. People will react to that in a positive way. So over deliver in every area you can with your relationships, your life, your career, all that stuff. Classwork, obviously. Um, next was to lose sleep for the right reasons. Um, if you're going to stay up late, make it making relationships, making friendships, uh, helping somebody, working on a project that you're really passionate about. Those types of things are what's going to make your day stand out. I always look back at my college experience and the things I remember are staying up super late with my best buddies, just laughing about stuff. And I'm sure everybody in this room's had some kind of similar experience, but that's, that's what memories are made of. You got to really, if you're going to lose sleep over something, make sure it's something memorable. And then lastly, uh, take chances, screw up, improve, get better. Like I'd mentioned earlier, a lot of people are afraid to fail and failure is such, I mean, once you understand failure is your friend, I'm sure most people in this room can attest to that. That's when you achieve success in your life is when you can fall flat on your face and get up and smile about it and just keep going. So um, that's my biggest thing, but I didn't want to forget out the most important things, kind of my life mantra is to live with intention. I, I didn't really get where I'm at today by accident. A lot of people think I'm kind of skating through life by the seat of my pants, which I am, just if everybody's curious. Um, but really just being intentional. When I got back from, when I got here, like I said, after my parents divorced and I got here, I was very intentional. I said, if nothing else happens here, I'm getting a good job. And by good, I meant something I'm really happy to do every day. And I'm happy to say that's what I do every day. So live with intention, really just be out there with it and just learn from your experiences. That's my biggest advice from my time here. So thank you and connect with me afterwards. Say hi or whatever. Go Storm.